Good morning, everybody. I'm really enjoying this uh, process of co-learning amongst the participants of this course. With uh, due respect, I would like to convey those who are not listening to these lectures may opt exiting the group or according to the set norm, we shall expel those persons from the group after missing to comment on three lectures. But definitely they can access the YouTube playlist which was created yesterday as per their convenience and message me personally in case of any query. What they will miss out is this peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunity where valid discussions. By the way, on the topic for everybody's knowledge, we are collecting all the discussions here and preparing a documented diary, which will be shared with all at the end of this course. Today, it's a small but a very important topic that I have picked up, the fallacy of deficiency theory. Let's start. Definition of deficiency. Excessive lack of specific food value, nutrients, etc. in the body. I'm sure we all are aware of this term. Many times we had been told that you are suffering from X deficiency. Nonetheless, we had been prescribed with some health supplements and after some time, surprisingly, we felt that we are cured. The process happens this way. Step one, you are asked to get some component of bloods to be checked and progressively found some ab abnormalities. Step two, you are prescribed with some medicinal supplement for a period of time. Step three, you are asked to get the same component of blood checked again. This time, in most of the cases, you are termed as normal. Step four, in maximum cases, you are asked to continue with the drug to maintain this normal limit. It happens with most of us, I'm sure. Here are the parameters, two diagnostic processes and health supplements. Both approaches are in parts. Those lack the holistic approach. As I was saying the other day, we don't require separate treatments for our little fingers and thumbs. We also don't require separate treatments for our specific component of blood. We are not parts, but whole. We need to get out of this another scientific superstition of this era. Before going further, I shall tell you a story of a snake charmer. In my childhood, I have seen these snake charmers who come to your house from front door and tell you in your home there is no peace. The reason is a snake in your backyard. Let me take out that snake, the peace will return. Then you allow him to go to the backyard and surprisingly he finds a snake and take that with him along with some money from you. Actually, he placed that snake in your backyard before approaching you. You find a mock relief from a tension which was put on you intentionally and taken back also showing some expertise and you pay for it. I think the correlation I need not to establish here. You can do it yourself. But let's go forward with our learning. Let us now understand our body's constituents. 
whenever we put whatever we put inside our body our body is made up of those constituents those things are sunlight cosmic radiations water air and food now what are the components of these elements it's very difficult question i must say the inquisitiveness is good if it is applied experimentally on your body it becomes superstition the modern science observed the transformation of these elements into bodily flesh blood filths etc and we started analyzing those in the labs sometime we find one component under some set of rules of chemistry which is again a man made concept and theories and we shout out in excitement of deciphering the nature's mystery then again next day we find another component and so on the excitement continues every time we think that we understood the nature completely next day it is found that it was half done for example earlier it used to be told you have bone problem you need calcium supplements from last few years it is found that calcium cannot be absorbed without vitamin d so now you are prescribed vitamin d supplements with calcium supplements for better absorption of calcium the story will continue i'm sure in coming years now how far we will continue experimenting with our health when there is easier rational and valid solutions available instead of concentrating on to blood fills etc if we concentrate on the input ingredients mentioned in the slide the health comes to us holistically on its own not in parts before going further i must share that our body can also be termed as soil so if you see uh, our body after death mostly gets disintegrated and become soil on the other hand soil is also exposed to all those bodies constituents mentioned on this slide soil gets sunlight it gets cosmic radiations it absorbs water and air as well now food if it is a right food it gets assimilated with soil very easily for example a biscuit takes time to get assimilated with the soil but a fresh mango pulp doesn't get doesn't take much time to get to get assimilated so mango is the right food but biscuit is not continuing with the correlation of body and soil let's understand the unimaginable synthesizing capability of our body and soil both the input elements to our body which are sunlight cosmic radiations water air food get transformed into body with its own forms of blood flesh filth etc holistically so is in case of soil whatever we put in the soil it becomes soil unless we apply our intelligence and put plastic or foil paper in the soil which takes millions of year to get converted into soil now let me share a story of uh, amazing transformation capability of our body there was a troop of soldiers suffered injury in war and were in tremendous pain in 
two groups this particular experiment was done group 1 was given morphine for pain management but was told morphine is not available so uh, they are giving some low dose medicine or something was told and the group 2 was injected normal water but told that morphine is administered surprisingly more than 75% of group 1 did not i repeat did not get relief even though morphine was administered and more than 75% of group 2 did get relief even though morphine was not administered you must be saying about psychological placebo effect but how the physiological pain gets eased this is the question there is some chemical impact in the body also it is due to the synthesizing capability of our body body actually created an antidote to the morphine for group 1 and a morphine like chemical for group 2 for their respective relief let's realize our tremendous potentiality of synthesizing the elements within us and the vitality which helps us to achieve health i shall conclude today's lecture with my own experience as i have shared already i was suffering from severe chronic rhinitis for years when i was in the process of changing my lifestyle and got over from diabetes etc this problem of rhinitis was still there it was not recovered that time i was advised to take amla indian gooseberry in winter season to get relief from deficiency of vitamin c which i might be suffering in my chronic rhinitis problem i followed that and i got relief from my problem but the story did not end there it again got resurfaced in a month time when i stopped amla i could realize the impact of suppression here and realized that it was not cure then in another 3 months time my problem got completely cured as i continued with better lifestyle practices and my vitality got increased which eventually cured my problem as a footnote i would like to share that deficiency theory is a medical term and nature cure does not accept this true deficiency is starvation not lack of any specific element here i end my today's lecture in this course i welcome your questions and doubts thank you